Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the Prison Podcast. Today, we have a very special and near and dear friend um, in my life, Jenna Ballard, on the podcast. And Jenna is truly one of the best in the industry when it comes to leadership development and really abundance and manifesting the life that you want from feminine energy. And a little bit about Jenna. Jenna actually got started uh, in the leadership space long before she started Ascension Leadership Academy, which we talk about in the episode. She was a master personal trainer for celebrities back in the day. And then she, she had a really basically traumatic event happen in her life that she openly talks about. And um, she decided to start the Ascension Leadership Academy alongside her husband, Brad, in 2016. And they have just exploded that in the San Diego and Austin, Texas market. And that's really focused on um, developing leaders, teaching people to step into their power, to not be victims to their circumstances, to take re responsibility and ownership for their lives. And that course impacted me directly uh, when I was 22 years old. It changed my entire life. But Jenna now also runs um, Together We Impress, which is a foundational group of women, really a uh, mastermind of such. And she is just literally one of the most fabulous women I've ever met. She really, really is. And you guys are going to see why I say that in this episode. Uh, I'm so excited for you guys to tune into this one. It's going to be really, really special. So without further ado, I'm going to bring you guys Jenna Phillips Ballard. All right, everyone. Welcome back to the podcast. Today, we have one of the most unicorn human beings I've ever met on the planet, Jenna Phillips Ballard, who has been, you've been such an influence in my life and, and you don't know the extent of it, but you've literally changed my life in so many ways. And without you, I don't think I ever would have gone down the path of transformation. So I am so, so excited to have you here on the podcast today. And if you can, I would just love for you to be able to share your story with the audience, um, how you got to this point in your life that you are now. And, and I just want you to go into all the details and then we're going to just break it all down from there. Oh, okay. So how much time do we have? Like, I, I first of all, I just want to say thank you. I'm honored to be here. I just am in awe of the woman that you have become witnessing the difference that you've made, how many people that you inspire, um, just like the many iterations of yourself, like you are absolutely killing it in life, crushing it. I'm just so incredibly inspired by your magic and just love you so much. And so I, I, what you said about me and who I've been for you is just such an incredible, incredible compliment. So I'm taking that, receiving that so deeply and passionately. Thank you. Um, okay. How did I get to where I am today? So like, again, how much time do we have? It's so funny. Cause I was literally writing out a post before I jumped on about all the, can I cuss on this podcast about all the Please. stuff? Okay. All the shit that I've been through, like, because I and I did a post yesterday about just how I've been navigating um being poisoned by black mold, like like living with black mold toxicity, living with black mold poisoning, the healing in that, the patience I get to have, the um the self-acceptance, the the self-love, the like the not the resistance, because I've really been resisting it. Like I've been, I've been experiencing it, navigating it, like dealing with it for the last two and a half years. And for the majority of the time, I've been giving myself permission to just like kind of sit in my, in my muck, like sit in my shit, sit in my mm -hmm. shadow, like pause, know what that means to be in the power of the pause, um, not rush, not skip steps. Cause you can't rush your healing. Right. So it's, it's been a really powerful time for me to live all the things that I teach <laughs> to live totally. all the things that I coach people into. Cause I would never, ever, ever coach anybody into like, Oh, you should skip that step with your transformation. Oh, you should definitely not look at your shadow. Oh, you should definitely, no matter what, whatever you do, like, don't look at yourself in the mirror and see what's hiding out your blind spots. Like I, I bring people toe to toe with their ego. And, and as you know, like the way that I stand for people, I have them look at themselves in ways that are absolutely undeniable. I mean, you can't deny what you see, if you're really willing and ready to look at yourself in the mirror. And there are Oof. so many ways that, that we can access that information, whether it's through plant medicine or 
um, somatic trainings, um, you know, powerful experiences that have us be toe to toe with our limitations, our fears. That's all our ego is. Our ego is just the embodiment of our limitations, our fears, kind of encapsulated in this in this being that we feel is like this demon living inside of our head, inside of our body, and renting space. And like we can't kick this tenant out. Like they're a squatter. Like we can't get rid of this person. Totally. Um, but what I want to say about that is what I've learned in all of the stuff that I've been able to navigate and all the stuff that I've been able to get through, like my mentor and business partner completely betraying me, um, being cheated on by my first love, waking up from a coma with brain damage and recovering from that. Um, you know, just like, I, and I made this list in this post I was writing before I jumped on this podcast, but all this, all this shit that I have experienced in my life, but how none of it has happened to me. How literally every single part of it has happened for me because of what it's taught me in that. Like being betrayed by my mentor, being manipulated and lied to and gaslighted and, or is it gaslit? I don't know. All those things. Like, you know, I don't know. That's, that's like the jury's out on that one. Um, but all those things like that taught me, I don't get to pedestal anyone mm. because everyone's a human being. Everybody can make mistakes and everybody has fear and scarcity somewhere in their consciousness, somewhere in their awareness, and then has them make choices that have them do things that are just unfathomable, unfathomable, right? Like, yeah. and I gave my power away to that experience. It was the most painful experience of my life, more painful than being raped, more painful than being molested by people I trusted, more painful than uh, being cheated on by my first love, more painful than my parents getting divorced, more pain, like more painful than all of that pain accumulated into one thing, like was that experience, right? Like, because of how hi, I put this person up on a pedestal. This person was my, was the biggest stand for me and my transformation broke me well, through my stuff. So I'm like, I will follow this person anywhere. Not only will I follow this person anywhere, I will without question, never consider for a second that this person could ever do the unthinkable. Like what wow. he did, I would have bet my life on it never happening ever. And then it happened, right? So, so what do you do with that? Then you get to look back and you go, wh what were the red flags that I didn't pay attention to? Where in that whole relationship did I make the things that are not okay in any of my other relationships okay? And because what? Because I put this person up on a pedestal. I had that person be more important than me. I had that person become and be and experience and like appear to be more powerful than me. Where what I know is my truth and my reverence for transformation and my stand for transformation and the, and the, the level at which I walk my talk, like he ain't got nothing on me and my level of leadership and the difference that I'm here to make. And so not that I wish anything bad on anyone, but karma is a bitch and it's coming. So mm -hmm. I am just going to not waste my time on that anymore and let that figure itself out because we get distracted, right? By, by the, by the unthinkable, the unfathomable by other people. And then it takes us off course and it literally takes us away from us living our purpose. So I can touch on all those things. You just let me know so <laughs> good. all the things. No, so. I mean, so, that's so powerful and so many lessons, even just within that. But I think what I can what I, what I want to dive into is victim mindset, because you have been through things that most people will never experience compounded time and time and time and time again. And what I see from you and I get chills down my spine, just thinking about it is like you, I've, it's, it's crazy. I've never seen you falter. And I know you do, right? I know that you do. I know that you might have slip ups or whatever in, in your mindset and, and you still struggle just like any human being, right? You're not on a pedestal either because we're all on them, right? <laughs> we're all on our own pedestal. But I've literally seen you just stand for others in such a powerful way, stand for yourself every single day, day after day, no matter what you're going through. And that takes a level of grit that is so rare. And so for you, despite going through all these different things throughout your life at different times, and we can dive into any of those that you want to talk about, like what has gotten you to the point where you never fall into victim mindset, or it's just for a quick second. Like, how did you get from celebrity trainer in LA to Jenna Ballard, who is leading thousands and thousands, impacting hundreds of thousands of lives at this point, I'm sure. And just literally, it feels like you never falter. Mm. Oh, thank you. Okay. So I just want to say I have 
man, I've given myself permission to fuck up. I've given myself permission to be messy. I've, I have, here's what I'll say. Let me think about this for a second. Cause I want to, I really want to be clear on what I want to say, because this is important. Most people do not want to confront or look at their ego. Most people, and I don't enjoy it. Like I actually almost never opened a center and I'll tell you why, because I was afraid of having one negative Yelp review. Like I was afraid, like, I was like, I don't want anyone to ever write. Cause I I've seen, I've seen like what businesses get, like the kind of, cause look, I mean, you have an iPhone, right? I know you do. Cause you've got the blue bubbles, right? Like, but people who have the green bubble phone, like they love their phone. They do not, they are not a fan of iPhones and vice versa. Am I right? Yeah. So there's not one thing for everybody. And I was my, my ego, my inner child was so wounded by not being accepted, not being liked, not being approved of, not being understood. Like that's one of my biggest things. Like my ego hates being misunderstood when my, my intentions are not received or my intentions are misunderstood or there's like a misalignment. Like that is one of the biggest things that my ego absolutely hates, hates, hates. And that was like, just that I was like, I don't want any bad reviews. I don't want anyone. Cause it's like, when you're standing for somebody, when you're standing for their transformation, you, it's it is not only it's going to go one of many ways. It can be like, oh my gosh, you've changed my life. It can be like, oh, wow, I can see the value in that. Or it can be like, okay, I'm ready. Or you'll get the people who are so committed to being right about the things that are not working for them in their life because they've wrapped their entire identity around it, that they will turn into like psychopaths and completely drag your name through the mud and try to ruin your reputation. And, and so, and I, and I've seen other leaders experience that not just center owners, but leaders. Yep. I never, ever wanted to be in the limelight so much so that like, I would publicly be not approved of or publicly like, so I had like the fear around like being fame, like famous or like experiencing fame on any level, because I never wanted to experience that. Like you mm -hmm. see people who are putting themselves out there, like they're actual, they're, they're literally famous for whatever reason, either they're an actor, actress, uh, you know, sports star or a commentator or like whatever, all the people who literally choose to put themselves out in front of people, they're choosing to be a leader. They're choosing to be exposed on every level. And so it takes a lot of courage to choose that. And most people won't ever choose that because they don't want to be fill in the blank, misunderstood, not liked, not approved of, not like, and so I almost, and I want you to think about this because I actually had someone write me a message. Mm. One of our coaches in one of our trainings recently, she's like, I had this, this breakthrough moment where I realized if you had just not accepted your purpose, how different my life would be because of full body like, chills. She got to experience and her family and her family, like, and I'm like, and she said, please don't ever give up. And I, Sydney, I've wanted to give up so many times, so many times. And, and this is for all of you listening. If you don't want to give up on the thing that you are chasing or the, the, the vision that you're creating or the thing that you're building, if you don't want to give up every single day for some reason, you're not, you're not dreaming big enough. Like you're not playing yep. a big enough game. Like it, because then there's nothing at stake. Right. And so of course we've got the people who, just choose the nine to five, the clock in, clock out, commute an hour and a half each way, like that kind of bullshit, because they would rather be told what to do than actually say, I'm going to tell myself and the universe and everybody in my space, what I'm going to create and how I'm going to do it. And you're either in or you're not. And I'm like, let's fucking go because most Good. people won't choose that. Most people choose followership rather than leadership the masses, Sydney, like I got to get really clear with all the things that I experienced in my life, specifically my head trauma accident. When I woke up from my coma with brain damage, I got to recover from that. And I finally understood the power of, I am like, I am going to graduate from high school on time. I am going to make full recovery. I am, I am. Uh, it was in that where I, where I really learned grit because I didn't understand it before I learned how to persevere. I learned what it meant to apply myself. I learned what it meant to get up and get up and get up and get up. Like every time I felt like I was getting knocked down. And so 
we have these experiences in our life that most people will say, man, I was a victim of that. Or man, they did that to me, or they cheated on me, or they betrayed me, or they would like all of those things. And I use that languaging because people can understand it. But I look back at, at all those experiences and, and I am the source of all of it. Like I am, I am the lowest common denominator in all of those experiences. So how can I claim my power? I choose to be responsible for it all. That's not the same as like saying that's my fault because none of it was my fault, but I'm mm. responsible because I have the ability to respond. I am response able. I can respond in such a way that is going to pave a new path, rewrite a narrative, you know, rewrite the narrative, create a brand new chapter, create a new interpretation. And we all have the ability to do that. And so in my deepest pains and my deepest struggles, I've been strengthened. And I've known in all of it that it's my purpose to share what I've learned because then it's just a thing that happened, right? Like, how do we have things happen for us? We choose to learn from it and then pay it forward. Yes. So powerful. Everything you said, I get chills every time you talk. It's, it's one of those, you know, concepts. It's like, you can either be broken. You can be broken by all those things that happen for you or happen to you or however you want to, you know, interpret it, or you can be broken open and it can unleash this entire new part of you that you didn't even think was possible. And had you not gone through the pain or the suffering or, you know, the, the trauma or the betrayal or whatever it may be, you wouldn't be prepared for the next phase of your life. And I think that that's what the universe really has put on your life is a huge amount of pain and suffering so that you can tru truly relate to every single person you come in contact with in that room, outside of that room in the world. And only a really big person can take on that big of problems and like see it through and become who you've become. So I just, I acknowledge you like, like crazy. Um, and you, you touched on there a little bit about abundance and, and speaking I am and, and the power of words. Can you, because I think you're one of my favorite people to listen to about abundance and manifesting. Do you have some like tips for listeners on like 101 of how to manifest, how to become more abundant, how to embody abundance? Do you have any any like things that are coming, coming to you in this moment that you want to share? Gosh, so many, I have so many things I want to share with you and more specifically, like these amazing, powerful abundance mantras that I, that I channeled and created authentic, powerful music, like original music to go along with it. And I'm creating an album right now. So that's all happening. I know girl, get ready, buckle up. It's going to be, it's going to be amazing. Um, so <laughs> it's all coming. Uh, but, but yeah, I think like the most important thing, if I were to condense all of it down into a few takeaways or, um, instant, instant steps that you can start to create in your life, you've got to know that everything is energy. Money is energy. People are energy. Your thoughts, the words that you speak, it's all energy. Everything is a vibration. And so we also must remember that we're not separate from anything. Like one drop of ocean water is still the ocean. There's, there's no separation. Like even if you take that drop of water out of the ocean, it's still the ocean. So you're not separate from anything that you want. And when you give yourself permission to trust that and to know that, and you have your thoughts and your actions and your words all be in harmony, because you can't be like, I'm manifesting a million dollars, but I'm tipping 10% when I go eat dinner or like, I'm like, I'm a serial manifester, but like, I don't trust the universe and your, your thoughts are just crazy. You, you've got to have all that be in alignment. So you've got to be really present to the thoughts that you're having. And if you're having thoughts that are absolutely in contrast to the exact experience that you want to create, you've got to be a self-cleaning oven. You've got to be willing to interrupt those thoughts and interrupt them with thoughts and vibrational experiences that are in direct alignment with that, which you want to create, because we don't attract what we want. We attract what we are. So if you want to date a 10, be a 10, <laughs> you want to be wealthy, be generous. We cannot create an experience that is completely in contrast to what's happening within us, within ourselves. We've got to know that we're not separate from anything. The universe is always listening. Your body is always listening. And for those of you listening right now, I mean, I'm sure that you've had the experience of thinking about somebody and then they text you two seconds later, or you mm -hmm. think about a song and then it comes on Spotify and like randomly out of nowhere, you're like, whoa, I was literally just thinking about this song two seconds ago. That's the universe saying like, hey, 
just so you know, you're a serial manifester. Just so you know, when you lightly think about something, it can happen that fast. And the only reason why it's so hard to manifest the house that we want, the job that we want, the car that we want, the person that we want is because we focus on the fact that it's not here yet. We focus on the fact that like, oh, I don't have that thing that I want. And that gap becomes our reality. When you focus on not having it, you're like, oh, well, I do the mantras and I like, you know, listen to the podcast, read the books and do the things. And like, where, where's my shit universe? <laughs> think about <laughs> being in a relationship with someone who's like that, right? Like, think about that. Not trusting. You're like, hey, universe, where's my shit? I'm doing the mantras and doing all the things. Like, why isn't it here yet? Think about, I'm sure you've all had a relationship like this where you're like, you just want to plan a nice little surprise for the person that you love. And you're like, got to sneak away to text people. Cause you're like, Oh, I got to do this thing. And like, Oh, I got to like, you know, plan this, you know, secret, you know, cake and all this stuff. And they just start, they're like, where have you been? I, what are you up to? And you're like, Whoa, first of all, I'm trying to just give you the biggest surprise party of your life. Like, can't you just freaking trust me and like settle down? Like imagine the universe is like, Jesus, never mind, never mind. I'm not giving you shit. You ungrateful motherfucker. Um, so that's the universe. Like the universe wants to support you and give you everything you want. Just trust the process. So there's that. Um, also, ladies, the inside of your purse currently, what it looks like is a reflection of what your life currently looks like. So if you if it looks like a bomb went off in there, clean out your purse. Do it daily. <laughs> Do it every day. Guys, if your car is a freaking disaster, what are you doing? You get to take care of your stuff, take care of your space purge, clean, move energy. If you have stuff that's like cluttering, a lot of the times it's because people are afraid that more won't come. Like they love the look and the feel of a, of a super, super crammed closet because it has them feel abundant. But what you're saying to the universe is I don't have any space for more. I don't have any more space for clothes. I don't have any more space for supplements. Cause I buy all the supplements and then just like stack up and collect dust. And like, I don't have space for more. So when we yeah. hoard things, we're actually cutting off the life force energy of flow coming into our space. So I remember mm. this one time, this was like 12 years ago, I was experiencing a, a dip in new clients. And I was like, I'm just going to purge my closet. And I did all my laundry and I did all the things and I clean, 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 clean. And I got an email from somebody saying they wanted to work with me. So call it a coincidence or call it like instant manifestation, you know, and, and I'll tell you who this person was. He was a person, I was doing squats with somebody on my shoulders in uh, the park in Santa Monica. <laughs> and he, like this little old man comes up and he's like, what's your name? I'm like, my name's Jenna Phillips. And he's like, okay. And he like walks off. It's so cute. Like this little old man. And he Googled me and he found me and he's like, I want you to be my trainer. And he hired this woman, gosh, her name was like lightning or something like that from the American Gladiators. So he had two trainers, me and her, and he was the inventor of the communication satellite. So basically the man who's responsible for us being able to have this call right now, like that was him. His name's Harold Rosen. He's the grandfather of satellites. Uh, the most amazing, most abundant, incredible man of my life. He was my soulmate. He passed away when he was 90 oh. Full story behind that. But, but here's what, I, like he was in my life for 10 years. And had I been stuck and focusing on the fact that like, the clients aren't coming and it's not happening. And, and I could have potentially blocked off that flow from coming into my space because I'm like, I'm going to be in committed action. Cause this is another thing. This, this is what does not work about manifestation. Cause people think like, I'm just going to sit on my couch and like, I'm going to manifest a million dollars. I'm going to, I'm just going to think about a million dollars. It's like, no, you also get to be in committed action. Your actions get to reflect that, which you want your thoughts, the words that you speak, I'm a manifester. I'm a manifester. I'm a millionaire. I'm a millionaire. I'm a multimillionaire. I'm a multimillionaire. Like those are my thoughts. That's what I speak. That's what I'm causing. That's what I'm generating. And my actions reflect that reality. You've mm -hmm. got to have it all be in sync. Otherwise forget about it. So move some energy, clean out your purse, ladies, purge, 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 open up space in your closet. I swear it works every time. There's so much freedom in space. I've, I've found that I tra I've traveled for a year. And I lived out of one suitcase for an entire year. And I realized I don't need things to feel good. I don't need, you know, a, a full closet to feel safe anymore. And I think it was so liberating for me now. I'm like, I love space. I love getting rid of things. I love decluttering. I love helping my friends declutter. I love, I love that idea. But the purse is one for me. I'm like, I looked in it this morning. I was like, I need to clean that shit out. So thank you for that. Get it, girl. Get it. <laughs> That is so funny. I, okay. So another thing I really wanted to ask you about is how you operate from a space of 
feminine energy while still being a badass businesswoman and not operating out of a place of burnout and you you prioritize your self-care. I think that's something that, again, you're very masterful at having that balance because it's very rare that I see women that are really powerful, strong women that operate really fl fluidly in their, their feminine power as well. So can you talk about that a little bit? Yeah. Um, I want to say that, gosh, it's, it, it, it took me burning out many times and fatiguing my adrenals to learn that like, oh, wow, like I would never coach anyone into hustle, hustle, grind, grind, like Gary V freaking like that whole mm. mindset, like Gary V do more, do more. Like, no, that's not the way. Um, I just, I learned, I learned the hard way. Um, and I think that's true for most powerful women is like, we get to a place of redlining and being responsible for it all and trying to do it all because the story that we make up is no one can do it as good as we can. And so why even waste the time on training somebody else to step in and support because I can just do it myself. Like, never mind, I'm just gonna do it. And then we get to be martyrs about not having enough energy for ourselves left over at the end of the day. So it's all of that. Like I multiple times and it didn't, it didn't learn it once. Like I kept repeating that mistake. This is when lessons are mistakes and we don't learn. We don't apply the lesson. It becomes a mistake and we don't apply the lesson that was available for us. But when we choose to see the lesson and the blessing or the blessing in all of that, like that's when we can start to create significant transformational change in our life that is actually sustainable because I learned that my power is actually in my feminine. And it was through a series of workshops. So it was, I was in this workshop called Grace that my mentor, the like the most amazing mentor, Krista, Krista Petty, love her. Oh my gosh. Um, she just lit a fire in me because in this training, in a somatic training, it was movement where I got to experience what it means to balance the masculine and the feminine. Because my default, which is not natural, but the default that I chose because of many, many times and experiences in my life where I believed that my value was found in what I did, not in who I was. Like, that's the story that I made up. Like, I'm never going to be enough. So no matter what I do, it's never enough. So I just need to do more to somehow try to prove to everyone that I matter. I finally realized that my power is in my feminine. And it was in that training when I said, I'm worthy of being found by an incredible man who's going to love, honor, cherish, and respect me. And three days later, Brad, my now husband and father of my baby boys found me on match.com because I was looking, 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 looking on the hunt for my man, searching, doing the masculine work and not creating the environment, not being the frequency of that healthy garden to be tended to and watered and, you know, like all of that stuff. I mean, wow. I was not creating that environment because I was just this being this masculine warrior, like in every way, of course, that created, you know, a significant amount of results in my business, but also it wasn't sustainable because I was like overtraining. I was working out three times a day, like hustling, hustling, hustling. Um, and like, that's not, that's not the frequency that I wanted to experience. And so I realized that that does not work specifically in creating and establishing romantic relationships. There's no balance there. And so I kept, I kept attracting these weak, feminine, um, man children. I mean, literally like I had to put gas in their car so they could come see me literally. Like it was just, I mean, I've been there girl because I, you know, I'm like, I will never date a man that makes more money than me. Mm, 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 mm. And so of course I manifested, I manifested that like ridiculous. So, so that's, I, it, it's in the awareness, right? Like paying attention to what's not working has us get extra clear about what we actually want. And the parts of ourselves that we get to surrender and set down so that we can create space for more of that to come alive right now. Oh my gosh. I love that. And I, you know, it just comes down to the frequency, like align with the frequency of that, which you want. And again, be in the aligned action or in action and receiving mode, but it's, I hear it so often from, from people who are in some of the healthiest relationships from the women. It's like, once I stopped trying and pursuing, and I, I just was in receiving mode, it came in and, and it's, it's that way in, in so many areas, but especially in relationships. And I can definitely relate to a lot of how you were before for sure. <laughs> like guilty as charged. Uh, 
Um, I would love to hear from you what you are most excited for in the next two years, five years. I mean, you're, you're, I mean, I would still consider you a new mom of two baby boys Mm -hmm. and you have a lot going on. I'm sure a lot has shifted for you and what you want, what you desire, what you're creating, but like, what is firing you up the most right now? I'm so happy you asked that question. Um, honestly, unleashing my artist, like full creativity. I want to make an album. I want to make music. I want to create an Oracle deck of cards. I want to launch my book. So there's like all of these things where I get to be in full creation, like really just creating cool shit, um, releasing an I am jewelry line, um, just really cool stuff. That's going to have people remember who they are. So there's that. Uh, it, and, and I created this I am logo. I mean, you've seen my logo, the I am logo. Um, I created it. I want to say 10 to 12 years ago and trademarked it and didn't do anything with it for two reasons. Number one, fear, because Will I Am was suing a bunch of people for using I Am, like whatever. So I was like, I'm not going to create a bunch of products and have to shelf it all. And then the second reason is because I spiritually wasn't ready for it yet. Mm. I wasn't ready for it yet. Now I get that like it's been in the can and I'll explain that, 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 um, analogy in a second. It's been in the can for a few years and I'm ready to like, give it the life that it's worthy of having. So have you seen the, the, um, the Top Gun Maverick movie? Have you seen that movie? Okay. So that movie sat in the can for three years. I did not know that. Like it was, they could have launched, they could have released it. That movie's made $700 million, 700 million. So had it been released too soon, right before COVID, right? I don't remember the exact timeline, but like had it been released sooner, it maybe wouldn't have received that kind of success. So there is a maturation process. There's a gestation process for all things. So Mm -hmm. if any of you are like, I'm running out of time or, oh my gosh, Mm -hmm. like I, 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 I gotta get ahead or I gotta do like that whole experience of rushing, you're not honoring the gestation process that is required for your dream to fully mature, to be launched and to be put out into the universe. And of course you get to take action steps. Of course you get to move forward. Of course you get to be in committed action and just know that everything's gonna line up when everything within you is aligned. When the words that you speak, when the actions that you take and the thoughts that you have are all in harmony, the universe is gonna respond in such a way where everything's just gonna come together. Like everything's just going to fall into place. Like you just get to trust that and stop asking why it's not here yet. Because you're some, you're simply trying to rush something that's divine and divine timing is unlike anything else. So that's so cool. And I I love that you're pursuing your artistic side and and your creative side and like your soul. It just feels like your soul is going to come out through your projects and I mean, your soul already comes out through your work and your impact, but I think it's going to, it, it's going to be so different and really cool to see it in like a physical form, like your soul getting put into items and song and Oracle cards, which, you know, I'm going to be all up about, <laughs> I'm going to be all up in those. Um, I'll be your, I'll be your best, uh, your best customer. I love it. I'm, uh, I'm so grateful for you. I don't want to take too much of your time, but where can people work with you? How can they find you? I'm obviously going to drop all the links below, but what are the main areas that people can work with you right now? Super, super easy to find me. I am the one, the only Jenna Phillips Ballard in the universe. There are many Jenna Phillipses, many Jenna Ballards, but there's only one Jenna Phillips Ballard. So I'm easy to find super easy. Um, and you can find me on social media, Facebook, Instagram, um, check out my website, And if you want to work with me like instantaneously, there are a few different ways that you can figure out how to access my work, whether it's through Ascension Leadership Academy, which Sydney, you're obviously a graduate of. Um, If you'd like to work with me more personally, then of course there's an application process, but all that is is super easy to find and available on my website, jennaphillipballard.com. Amazing. Thank you. Is there anything else you want to leave everyone with anything that's on your heart right now that you want to, that you want to speak, that you want to say? First thing that came to me is everything is temporary. Hang on, hang in there. 
you got this. I promise you, you not only can you get through it, but it's going to support you in living your full, full vision. If you just simply allow it to be that for you. Jenna Phillips Ballard, everyone. That was so incredible. Thank you so much, Jenna. Um, you guys, I'm going to put everything in the show notes, but thank you so much for coming on today. Thank you for having me. I love you so much.